Welcome to the Strong Family Podcast, Third Student Podcast on Rewards. One of the first things that came to my mind was legacy. What do you want people to think of you once you pass away? So for birthdays, for example, because they're a big thing where you eat drunk food, you don't want to. No one's going to remember that you ate drunk food on your birthday because that's what everyone does. Mm-hmm. And we're trying not to do it as much. So first, thank you. thank you, Henry, for inviting me on your podcast. It's my birthday today when we're recording this, and my legs aren't working great, so I couldn't get off the couch. And Henry jumped in there and asked me to stay, and I'm comfortable on the couch. So I appreciate that because we did a bunch of mountain climbs for my birthday. What did you do for your last birthday, and why was it important to you? So I did 1,011 pull-ups. I was doing. I was turning 11, and. I did that because that was one of my favorite things to do because I like to work out. It's a pull-ups one I've been with my thing for a while because I practice them a lot. And they're pretty fun. They hurt, which is <laughs> makes them better. What I like about the physical stuff, Henry, now that you mention it, is that it's earned in a, a very real way through your effort. It's not something that I can gift to you. It's something that you have to earn yourself. Do you enjoy that? Mm-hmm can't gift me a 1,011 pull-ups. You can give me an opportunity by, if you have a pull-up bar, which we do, gives me the opportunity of being able to do it. And you did 4,140 on your 40th birthday, yep. right? Yep, and that's got me ready to want to do mine. Let me ask you this question, Henry. Do you think it would be more or less memorable for you if you said, hey, I want to do 1,000 pull-ups on my birthday, I got behind you and lifted you up and down on the pull-up bar 1,000 times. That would be, I'd like it more. Even if I did 500, if I did them by myself. Well, you did them with me, but not like helped me get me up. Why is it important for you to accomplish things by yourself? Because you want to be, one of our podcast ideas is raising independent kids. You want to be independent and, let me think. So I want to do it by myself because I want to show that I can do it and I don't need someone to always push me along. That's a great point. What kind of characteristics does that build in you or how does it make you feel to be able to accomplish it by, your, by yourself? Like we're all there cheering you on, but you did the work. Like what does that reinforce in your life? It makes me want to do it again. It gives me pride because I'm proud of myself for doing it. And... I like having that feeling of accomplishment that I accomplished it. So if you do 10 pull-ups, you have a feeling of accomplishment. Maybe if you're just starting on a challenge, 10 might feel good for you. But for me, it wouldn't be as huge of an accomplishment, even like 100. Because one of my workouts was doing 100 every day until that challenge. So that 1,000 really made me feel that accomplishment feeling. I think you're doing a good job of saying that it's not really push the pull-ups that the 1011 pull-ups that make it special it could be 50 it could be 500 based on the person but it's the fact that you set a goal and you train for it and then you nailed it yeah and that goal for some people could be learning a new musical number it could be a hike it could be any sort of thing like that yeah so for my brother it was we got to go out to a hunting range as our reward for doing was it five push-ups, I think? That's right. He had to train until he got water bottle perfect five so push-ups he said, without letting his hips sag down, crunch the water bottle, laying that side, push back up, and then, yeah, we went out to the range as a reward and an experience for him to remember. And I'll have a question for you. You have a very good memory. What did you have as a birthday treat three years ago at your birthday? Do you remember? See, I don't know, and I see where you're going with this. Oh, you see? Oh, you're clever. Yeah. Where do you think I'm going with this? That you're not going to remember that. I, you did a 100-mile race. We're going to remember that forever. You're not going to be like... Oh, I'm not going to let anyone forget that. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever you walk by that little thing, it'll plaque say 100 mile. You guys remember I did a 100-mile race? You guys remember that? Good yep. bringing that up. <laughs> Once you get to do it, you get bragging rights, so you can annoy people by being like, remember a time I did a five pull you yeah, know? you're just doing a subtle way, remember? Yeah. Yeah, funny way where it gets it. So you do see where I'm going with it, which is I bet in a decade from now, 
When you're 21, help us. When you're 21, <laughs> I bet you will remember what you did on that 11th birthday and not what you ate. Because I do remember Mom's strawberry frosting was great, but that's not the biggest part because it was the challenge and accomplishment feeling and the bragging rights that really made it more of an enjoyable and worth it birthday. Do you remember what I requested for my birthday last year, other than the pull-ups? Wasn't it a parade? We got a birthday parade to celebrate me, which was, you guys did a very good job. It was funny, but what else did I ask you and Logan to do? What did you ask us? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, for my birthday, I had the request that you and Logan climb the mountain by our house and wave to me. Oh, that was good. I didn't, I remember doing that. I didn't remember it was on your birthday. Yeah, that was my special request because what's it? me isn't what pizza I ordered for my birthday it's how far are my kids come and what can they do independently and that was a huge reward for me I sat out on the porch and you can see the lookout from the porch and I sat out there for probably 40 minutes just staring at it and waiting for a, you had a little blue hat on at that time to pop out over the rock and wave and then hustle down and that meant a lot to me because I got that was a major reward in my life and I'll remember that you boys did that yes because you're not going to remember what you ate, even know how tasty it might be. <laughs> but if you do do a challenge and eat something, you don't feel good. So just do the challenge. <laughs> so. Well, that's a good point. I know we've almost gone for 10 minutes already, which I appreciate you inviting me on your podcast. What final thoughts you have for your kids edition viewing audience, Henry, that thoughts or ideas that can help them in their lives create some of these types of memories oh well, yeah so i have a little story here about one time me and logan did the mountain i think it might have been with you or by ourselves to see like the fireworks from pike's peak and we got to go out to sonic after as a reward they give us forks instead of spoons i hate it so much i'm never going back there it wasn't even a good reward really so like i would have much rather came home and gotten a firm handshake so it's <laughs> my favorite yeah, we've it's a constant gentle pressure. We're not perfect because this is about two years ago. We we climbed Pikes Peak for the midnight fireworks, and they snowed out. We didn't see any fireworks. We had a great time doing the hike to be able to see them because they shoot them off the top of the mountain at midnight. And I applied the old reward system. Hey, let's go up. And then we had a terrible time. I was all grumpy about it. The kids didn't like it. And then something that we switched to is firm handshake, two pats in the back because they understand that a big reward is respect. Yeah, they even wrapped it in a napkin, so we wouldn't know they gave us forks. Oh, that <laughs> but I don't want to get going <laughs> That's on that. That's the last time we ever point. went. Last time we ever went, and teaching them to value, and I value, like if someone that I looked up to came up and gave me a firm handshake, say, I really appreciate you. That's a much bigger reward than them shipping me a piece of pie. Yeah probably bad by then anyway so like yeah, not even worth pie. it yeah so that's a, that's a good point it's funny i was speaking in orlando last week and we had this contest to see who could follow the directions the best between the hundred participants at vince gabriel's spf mastermind and i was up there speaking for a few hours we had this contest and the reward was they got their choice of a firm handshake two pats on the shoulder or a sincere nice job and because, yeah, it had to be sincere. I don't, not someone who throws out tons of unearned compliments. So when someone does something, it actually means something when you get, hear it. And it means something to me when you come up and, and say, hey, good night and give me a handshake or a hug. Like those mean something to me much more than other items. So that's a good reminder about the handshake, Henry. Yeah. Because you want to have those memorable times because if you look back, you might remember what you had like last year on your birthday. Or it doesn't just have to be birthdays. It's any time for any reward. Birthday is just a good example because it happened to everybody. Most people would eat junk food on it. And you want to have something memorable. And I think I'm even going to do a different challenge next year. Because I don't want to just do it once and say that's good enough. It's not really what I think. I want to keep going and practice that whole year 
and go to that challenge. If I can do that challenge, I, I did. I practiced that good enough for that year of my life. The ch challenge accomplishment represents a year of your work on personal development and growth, which is very admirable. Would you like to read us out, Henry? Yes, so um, thank you for listening to the Strong Family Project Kids Edition. Thank you.